here's the deal. He really is the most interesting yeah. man in the world. And if you look at actor Jonathan Goldsmith's uh, new book, Stay Interesting, you really tell the tales. Nice to have you here this morning. Nice to be here. Uh, so a nine-year run with the Dosa Keys uh, ads. Um, and you tell me you've, you've had a lot of experiences in Hollywood. Is, is this the signature part? Brian Cranston always says uh, <laughs> Walter White is the tombstone role. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, this talks a lot about my Hollywood adventures. I lived here for... 45 years. Mm. You lived here and you loved here. What I think is interesting about this book oh, hello. is that, yeah. hello, <laughs> you sort of kiss and tell. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit, but hopefully there's more in the book than just that. Uh, the, indeed there is. There's a lot of advice. And yeah. were people good at giving you advice? Throughout my life, certainly. Mm -hmm. It makes a big difference having a support group and having a mentor. And that's what the book is all about. It's about my love affair with my father. Hmm. Uh, uh, other names are, are mentioned as well. Warren Beatty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> look at these chuckling. What was what, what was Warren Beatty's advice to you? Well, when I first got to uh, Hollywood, I had a wonderful job. I was a garbage truck man, hmm. and I would drive up Beverly Boulevard, Beverly uh, Wilshire, in the morning, and uh, I'd see all these lovely ladies going into the Beverly Wilshire Hotel on Wilshire Boulevard, and which I is where he lived for a long time. Well, I didn't know that, and hmm. coming back at night covered with grime and sweat, same thing, and I investigated, I found out, Warren Beatty lived in the penthouse. So uh, being uh, not too shy, I figured out a way that I might capitalize on this, and I would change in the truck, and I'd go in, and I'd see these lovely ladies, and I'd say, excuse me, Warren sent me down. No. He's, he's very busy, oh. and he wanted me to take you for a drink. Stop oh. it. That was a very big help to my... <laughs> So, and it worked. Uh, it worked. During the five years we've done this show, we've featured a lot of bizarre stories. We talked about the man who thought the Noid was based on him and thusly held a Pizza Hut hostage as a result. We touched upon an erectile dysfunction ad campaign that changed email laws and sent a man to prison. And we even went into great depth about an animated man so despicable he helped to bring down an entire restaurant chain. But perhaps none of those are as wild as the fact that one mascot became so popular, so revered in his iconography, that even the goddamn President of the United States became friends with him. As it turns out, the most interesting man in the world wasn't as much of an ad campaign as it was a hidden truth. There is truth in advertising, yes I swear, yes I swear Got new Nikes on my feet and beat out Sassoon in my hair I can sure use a Budweiser for the Loom underwear There is truth in advertising, I swear Why would they lie to me when they love what they sell? Plus we all know that the liars have a special fire in hell On the television, radio, and in the magazines The advertising gods perpetuate the American dream Let it be, let it be Now I know that I don't need to buy Everything to try to sell me But so easily divided is a fool And his money There is truth in advertising Let it be Why would they lie to me When they love what they sell Plus we all know that the liars Got a special fire in hell On the television, radio And in the magazines The advertising got to let you The entertainment industry can eat your life if you're not careful. And I don't even mean in the sense of the cost of fame and dangers of success. I mean simply trying to become famous. You can lose literal decades to auditions that never pan out to anything worthwhile, all while growing ever older and in an industry that values youth above all else. Age is not usually a highly sought after requirement. However, for one man, it did, in fact, save his career. Or rather, started it at all. This is Jonathan Goldsmith. Goldsmith had quit Hollywood in his 50s after a lengthy, but what he considers rather forgettable, career in television. By the time he was in his late 60s, 
He was conserving every dollar and living in his pickup like a hobo. His words, not ours. Goldsmith's career, pre-Dos Equis campaign, is a perfect example of what I meant when I said this lifestyle will eat you alive. As he tells it, he'd made friends with movie stars, but had never been a movie star. He'd been Judy Garland's date, been shot by John Wayne, and even starred opposite Burt Lancaster. He'd worked in theater, on Broadway, with Tennessee Williams. He'd shared a stage with Dustin Hoffman. And this is, sadly, the way it goes for many folks in the industry. You can catch lots of breaks, but never the break. The one that catapults you to superstardom. So... In 2005, he was nearly homeless, almost broke, and had spent a good portion of his life chasing something that never seemed to pan out. In 2011, he was playing golf with President Obama while running fundraising charities alongside him at Camp David. Talk about being the comeback kid. When he got the audition for the commercial, he was certain it was a waste of time. He was not only older than most everybody else, but he was also burnt out, understandably. Still, he was determined. In a split second, watched by a live camera feed to New York, he decided, on a whim, to imitate his late dear friend Lorenzo Lamas, mimicking his Argentinian accent and sentence structure. Within minutes, he spun a tale of dating Che Guevara's younger sister, and challenging Fidel Castro to a pistol duel. The casting agents, he says, were roaring with laughter, and it seemed like a lock. Unfortunately, time went by, and he was given the phone call he'd been given so many times before. His fears personified yet again upon hearing the phrase, you were terrific, but we want someone younger. Needless to say, however, youth didn't win out this time. Because months later, he was in an L.A. studio saying his famous catchphrase. Suddenly, the man who had been in everything, but never been in anything, was everywhere. Sure, he wasn't a major movie star, but the popularity of the ads hoisted him to new heights regardless. His image became plastered on the side of buses, billboards, and more. He was approached by Michael Jordan in an L.A. restaurant and asked for a picture. Leo DiCaprio also approached him in a restaurant to shake his hand, as did Jennifer Lawrence a mere month later in the same restaurant. If nothing else, Goldsmith's fame proves the impact a good mascot can have. They become so recognizable that their iconography can rival that of the biggest A-listers. But Goldsmith had one thing a lot of mascots didn't. Autonomy. He is a living, breathing human being. See, most mascots we cover are cartoons or puppets or something along those lines. They might have a sense of humanity to them, a voice actor like the Geico Gecko. But in the end, we're attached to the visual, not the audio. But Goldsmith was real. He's a real, living, breathing person. He was someone you could easily meet, apparently in restaurants, from what we heard. But perhaps the most amazing connection he'd make would be with the former president, Barack Obama. He was part of a welcoming committee in Vermont and was invited to be in a greeting line of about 200 people. Obama was currently starting his second run for the presidency and recognized Goldsmith on the spot. What started as a small photo opportunity quickly became a lengthy conversation, and before he knew it, he was invited to be a surprise guest at Obama's birthday. And it wasn't just the president who was thrilled to see him. Goldsmith partook in photos with Secret Service members and other presidential aides and staff. He even got to sit beside Obama at the dinner table. They smoked cigars later that night, and Obama told him he could use his personal pool. Obama later gifted Goldsmith a little blue jewelry box with gold presidential cufflinks inside. You may be noticing we focused more on the man behind the mascot than the mascot himself. 
and that's primarily because it's hard to tell the difference. One could easily argue Goldsmith's life has been just as fascinating as the character he portrayed in the ads. Sure, the character has since become a meme online, but as we said, it's rare we often have a human being doing these up front. The other reason we aren't focusing as heavily on the history of the campaign is because there just isn't much of one. It existed. Then it didn't. Aside from Goldsmith's interaction with getting the role, there's nothing super fascinating about its creation. Nor did it lend itself to the things most campaigns we've featured usually have. There's no dolls. There's no songs. There's nothing but a man. The man. But we think that for once, that's more than enough. His place in pop culture, even without the ancillary media attachments, more than proves that sometimes all you need is the mascot. And not all that other stuff. The adverts themselves were simple. Basic, in fact. They're so recognized that I likely wouldn't even have to describe them because you're probably familiar with them. They feature an older, bearded, debonair gentleman discussing his exploits when he was a younger man. He's often seated in a nightclub or another social setting, surrounded by beautiful women and, of course, drinking Dos Equis. Goldsmith was retired from the role in March of 2016, which really isn't all that long ago, shockingly. The final ad produced, featuring Goldsmith and his iteration of the character, portray him as going on a one-way journey to Mars amid acclaim, with the narrator stating, His only regret is not knowing what regret feels like. In September of that same year, he was replaced with a younger French actor named Augustin Legrand. The campaign itself then ended in 2018, a mere two years later. No shade to Legrand, but I think that alone states how attached to the character Goldsmith was. Was that trying to even do it with someone else simply wasn't enough. Some actors refused to quit. Some refused to be anything other than household names. Some refused to be anything but a superstar. But I think Goldsmith is the rare occurrence of a man who recognized that fame at any level is worth the effort. That advertising is just as impactful and iconic as anything else. The man became friends with the former president, for God's sakes. He truly was the most interesting man in the world. Goldsmith, now 84, works primarily doing charity. An advocate for landmine victim support and assisting the Morris Animal Foundation in their efforts to prevent and cure cancer in dogs, he's also supported the Sabre Foundation, whose mission is to protect and preserve the Siberian tiger. He's also donated his time to the Free Arts for Abused Children, which pairs artists with children in protective custody, and the Stella Link Foundation, a group calling attention to child trafficking in Cambodia. Even at 84, he continues to do good things and be interesting. Despite reprising his role briefly in a series of commercials for Stella Artois at the Super Bowl and for Astral Tequila in 2019, respectively, Goldsmith and the character proper appear to be finally retired. But perhaps the best interaction should be told. Goldsmith once stated in an interview that he realized how successful the campaign had been when a man came up to him in yet another restaurant, because apparently eateries are the only place Goldsmith hangs out in, and told Goldsmith that he had asked his young son what he wanted to be when he grew up, to which his son replied, I want to be the most interesting man in the world. I don't know about you. But no kids ever said they wanted to be Ronald McDonald, did they? So let's pour one out for the most interesting man in the world. He's done it all. He's seen it all. He's been it all. He would like for us to do the same. He once stated in an interview that life is only as interesting as you make it. So if you want to watch from the sidelines, that's how interesting life will be. But if you want it to be interesting... You have to be interested in making it so. A valuable life lesson indeed. Even if it is from a fancy old man with a severe drinking habit. 
Stay thirsty, my friends. Thank you.